If you think that science has all the answers, we're guessing you've never seen one of our videos. We love finding mysteries, and we're happy to travel all over the world and backwards and forwards through time to find them. We go looking for the inexplicable, the strange, and the downright bizarre. And when we find it, we bring it all to you in videos like this one. Let's go! What do you imagine to be the most sensible way to build a church or a cathedral? If your answer is brick by brick or stone by stone, then you're thinking of the same approach that architects and builders have used for centuries. During the 13th century in Ethiopia, though, someone thought a little differently. In the town of Lalibela, you'll find a whole series of rock-hewn churches, all of which are carved directly into a single lump of stone, and some of which are underground. Lalibela is a fiercely orthodox Christian town, and the residents treat the churches as sacred spaces. Some people even believe that they were made by angels. The supernatural explanation is unlikely, but the truth is that we don't know much about who built the churches, how, or why. Looking at the Church of St. George, which is the most famous of the eleven temples, one can't help but be amazed by the precision and quality of the craftsmanship. To achieve this degree of geometrical perfection 800 years ago, while carving straight into a rock surface, really does seem like the work of a god. It's no surprise that some people call it the eighth wonder of the world. The biggest tourist attraction close to the town of El Calafate in Patagonia are the calving icebergs at Perito Moreno Glacier National Park. The icebergs draw thousands of people to the area every year, but very few of those people are prepared for the mysterious sight of the so-called Sombrero Rocks, there are several of them in the hills that surround the town, one of which is so enormous that it can be seen for miles around. Some visitors speculate that the Sombrero Rocks must have been carved by human hands, but scientists don't believe that to be the case. Instead, they think that the distinctive-looking rocks are natural formations known as concretions, made of iron oxides and formed by their diagenetic environment. The majority of their composition is believed to be limonite and geophyte, but they also contain magnetite and hematite. While they're high up on the hillsides today, it's thought that they formed deep within the ocean, but were deposited here by thawing glaciers before being worn into their current shapes by millions of years of weathering and exposure. Not everyone is satisfied with that explanation, though. Concretions often form spheres, but the sombrero rim shape is unique to this part of the world, and is harder to explain. For several centuries, Vilcabamba was a lost city. It wasn't until this remote forest site in Ecuador was found by Manuel Ugarte in 1892 that modern-day explorers got their first glimpse of Vilcabamba, and they could scarcely believe their eyes. History tells us that Vilcabamba is where the Inca made their last stand, having fled here from Cusco in 1536 and remaining in Vilcabamba for 36 years before the Spanish eventually found them. The rock carvings they created during those 36 years are an ancient wonder. There are no signs of tool marks anywhere around the cuts and carvings, and yet we're supposed to believe that the Inca did all this work with nothing but bronze chisels at their disposal. It could even be possible that the Inca didn't carry out any of this work at all. Their oral traditions spoke of an older, wiser race called the Viracochan, who lived in this part of the world hundreds of years before them. It's clear that somebody who lived here in or before the 16th century was capable of making precision cuts in the bedrock, but we have no idea who or how. The features known as Marmite di Gigante can be found in the province of Pissarro and Urbino in Italy. If you can speak Italian, you'll already know what to expect of them. The name Marmite di Gigante translates into English as Potholes of the Giants, although they're also sometimes called the Potholes of the Devil. Each pothole is actually a deep pit in solid rock, which scientists say was caused by river erosion in former glacial areas. We prefer the local legend about the largest of the potholes, which says that a primordial goddess came and laid an egg on the rock during ancient times. The egg was the product of a forbidden love affair, 
and could only be hatched by a combination of wind, water, and fire. The legend is a little unspecific about why the elements were required to hatch the egg, or why the egg subsequently became a round stone, but that's often the way with legends. There are examples of perfect stone spheres and geological features like this elsewhere in the world, but none quite so beautiful or striking as Marmite di Gigante. The Western Wall is one of the most famous locations in Jerusalem, visited by millions of tourists every year. Everyone's heard of the wall, but surprisingly few people have heard of the enormous tunnel underneath it. The Western Wall is so enormous that a supporting wall half its height had to be built beneath the ground to support it. Modern-day estimates estimate that completing the supporting wall and the tunnels around them would have required the labor of at least 10,000 people. Looking at the scale and sophistication of the tunnels, it's hard to believe that they were created 2,050 years ago. The tunnels were forgotten after the wall was built, and weren't rediscovered until British archaeologists unearthed them during the 19th century. Even after that, it took a further 50 years to excavate the entire length of the wall. Aside from serving a practical purpose, the tunnels also contained water channels that once carried water to the Temple on the Mount, and a pool that may have been used as a sacred cistern or bath. Excavation is still ongoing within these tunnels, and more artifacts are recovered from this strange subterranean world every month. The Chuguilla Cave in Carlsbad, New Mexico, USA, was once thought of as an unremarkable place. Prior to 1986, it was used for bat guano mining and not a lot else. That all changed when cavers, who presumably visited the cave on a very quiet day, realized they could hear wind blowing beneath the cave floor. Their suspicions were enough to persuade the National Park Service to begin digging, and it was soon determined that there was a whole network of walking passages below the ground. Since then, 120 miles of tunnels and passages have been opened up. The cave is now 1,604 feet deep making it the deepest limestone cave in the USA. The rock formations inside the newly discovered reaches of the cave are staggeringly beautiful and include rare minerals and speleothems along with microbes that might eventually prove to have useful medicinal qualities that humans can exploit. Curiously, it seems that the cave formed from the bottom up rather than vice versa, which isn't unheard of in cave formation but remains a rarely seen and somewhat mysterious process. The cave's so-called chandelier ballroom was showcased in a BBC documentary called Planet Earth, which is the best way to catch a glimpse of this natural wonder. It remains off-limits to anyone who isn't an approved scientific researcher. There's a place in Kazakhstan called the Valley of Balls, and it's not as rude as you probably imagine it is. You'll find it in the desert of Shetba, and it's so named because it's covered in thousands of strange spherical rocks. Some of the rocks are little bigger than marbles, but others are bigger than the average family car. Very little research has been carried out on these rocks, so we don't have a convincing scientific explanation for them. It's possible that they're crystalline balls that formed in volcanic ash, but they could also be cannonball concretions. If they're the latter, they'd have been formed by sediment accumulating around a hard core, which is the same explanation attached to the sombrero rocks we looked at earlier in this video. Some scientists have even proposed that the balls are formed by nothing more remarkable than spherical weathering, which is where the elements smooth and erode rocks in circular or semicircular shapes over time. All of the explanations are possible, but none of them are proven. Maybe scientists simply don't like the idea of visiting the deserts of Kazakhstan to find out. We've all heard about crop circles, but how about tree circles? When aerial photographs of a forest in the Miyazaki Prefecture of Japan surfaced on the internet recently, conspiracy theorists were all over them in a flash. Surely only aliens could be responsible for creating such intricate patterns with trees. Actually, no. This is a form of experimentation, but its origins are distinctly human. These are Japanese cedar trees, known as sugi, 
and they were deliberately planted in concentric circles more than 50 years ago as part of a forestry project. With space in Japan limited, the government of the 1970s wanted to rethink small matters like tree spacing to see if more could be done in limited spaces. Each tree was planted in a radial increment of 10 degrees, creating a total of 10 concentric circles. They didn't imagine they'd cause such a stir when someone invented Google Earth decades later. The experiment seems to prove that tree density has an impact on growth, and the effect is now spreading out into the rest of the forest. The patterns were artificial at first, but now they occur naturally. We guess that makes the experiment a success. If you're a gambler, you might occasionally enjoy visiting racetracks, but we can think of one racetrack you'll never want to go to. It's the racetrack Playa in Death Valley, California, USA, and it's one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. Racetrack Playa is very hot, very dry, and very flat. It's hard to believe that it's a lake bed. It's even harder to believe that the rocks there appear to sail across the desert on their own, and yet they do. The so-called sliding rocks can easily be seen on the surface of the sand because of the long trails they leave behind them, including their direction of travel. The rocks can weigh several hundred pounds, so the wind shouldn't be able to move them, and yet the trails obviously show that they've been moved. This could be someone's idea of a prank, but if it is the work of pranksters, they've been operating under the noses of scientists and researchers for more than 100 years without being noticed. Nobody has ever recorded any of the stones in the act of moving, and no footprints have ever been detected leading to or from any of the stones, with the exception of those of scientists. It's a riddle nobody can solve. The Bisti Badlands of New Mexico appear to be covered in egg sculptures mounted on strange stone plinths. So, are they an eccentric celebration of Easter? No, they're not. They're actually the result of millions of years of erosion and weathering, leaving behind a strange egg-shaped monument in their wake. 73 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period, the desert was actually a sea. As the water ebbed away over the eons, it left behind sedimentary rocks like mudstone, shale, and sandstone, all of which were shaped by the tide. Streams continued to run across the land, slowly carving patterns and channels into the rock, and also leaving behind mineral deposits which give these egg-like rocks their unusual colors. The mudstone parts of the eggs weather faster than the sandstone, which results in the cracking that appears on some of them. Some of them are more than six feet long, and you could be forgiven for thinking they might be the fossilized eggs of giant dinosaurs. Had human hands carved these stones, we'd celebrate them as incredible works of art. Instead, it's nature we have to thank for the Bisti Egg Garden. There's already one iconic archaeological feature on Peru's Nazca Plateau, and that's the famous Nazca Lines. Far fewer people are aware of the Band of Holes, which is a shame because they're no less fascinating. The first time they came to the world's attention was in 1931, when they were captured in a photo taken from a plain high above the Pisco Valley. Clearly, an arrangement of 500 holes in a formation like this didn't happen by accident. So what could they have been used for? They were briefly thought to be a mass grave, but that theory had to be thrown out when no evidence of human remains could be found at the site. Today, we have a new theory that comes from research carried out by the University of California in the United States of America. Experts there believe that the holes might have been used as a crude way of determining units used in taxation or trade by the Inca. Inca people didn't use coins or other forms of currency as we would understand them, so they needed a way to determine a single unit of any item being traded or taxed. If the theory is correct, that unit was equivalent to one hole full of whatever commodity was being sold. Could there be a pyramid in Antarctica? The idea sounds absurd, but some people believe that one was found among the frozen wastes of the icy continent in 2016. They claim that the pyramid can be seen so clearly that it's visible on Google Earth, and the distinctive shape of the structure is too perfect to have been shaped by nature. They argue that it must have been built by human hands. That would be a real problem for the established narrative of history if it could be proven to be true, 
because it would have to be 100 million years old. Back then, Antarctica was a lush rainforest that would have provided a perfect cradle for life. Geologists are keen to point out that shapes like this are known as nunataks, which are pieces of rock that protrude above glaciers or sheets of ice. But that explanation hasn't satisfied conspiracy theorists. They say that no nunatak on Earth looks like this one, and that someone needs to travel to Antarctica to investigate the possibility that it's an ancient monument from a forgotten prehistory. We think that's incredibly unlikely, but then again, it genuinely does look a lot like an Egyptian-style pyramid. Surely it wouldn't hurt anybody to go and look. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!